Good evening, everybody. Any big star fans in the house? Welcome to Doc NYC. My name's Tom Powers. I'm the festival's director. Well, you got the lucky ticket. This show has sold out uh, earlier. This is our biggest house. Uh, the the fir uh, first time, in fact, in the festival we've sold out this house. You know, I, and I think it's testament to the fact that a lot of people have been waiting a long time for this story to be told. And uh, in this film, uh, it gets a great telling. You're the first audience in New York City to see this film. I want to bring up its director, Drew DiNicola. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to say it's uh, blowing my mind to see my whole life in front of me in this room. And I know Olivia and Danielle feel the same way, uh, family and friends. And um, we feel like we've been down in the salt mines, you know, plugging away and just surfaced recently. And we're just glad to see everybody. We also have uh, Jody Stevens and John Fry in the house. Here's the film. Do stick around afterwards. Big star, nothing can hurt me. Please welcome the film team. Directors Drew DiNicola, Olivia Mori, producer Daniel McCarthy, and our special guests, John Fry and Jody Stevens. We've kind of overstayed here. We made kind of a long movie, so we're not going to do much of a Q&A. Uh, we have John and Jody here, though, and maybe you want to ask them some questions. So, yeah, I'd love to hear from both of you, you know, your reactions to watching this film. Well, um, this is the third time I've seen the final cut. Uh, the first time I saw the final cut uh, was in London at the uh, BFI Film Festival, and I could have seen it before then, but I'm swore that I wouldn't see it until I could see it for the first time on the big screen. And uh, uh, when I did see it for the first time on the big screen, I was blown away. Uh, I think these folks and everybody else that's worked on it has done a terrific job of uh, telling the story. And um, I don't know what Jody thinks, uh, but, but, but I lived it. So... Um, uh, I should know a little something about it. I think it's uh, pretty remarkable that maybe six years ago, is that what it was? John Fry gets a phone call from Danielle and uh, asking about this. And <clears throat> we, I think we both look at each other and think it's not likely. Um, but being the charming person that she is and the big-hearted person she is, I... I think she won John over and, and consequently me. And uh, it's, uh, I'm glad you had that foresight to do this. So much has changed over the last six years, but uh, I have tremendous amount of gratitude for the hard work and the heart that you've all put into this. It uh, means a lot. And you know, I don't know if you noticed, it goes by pretty fast, but um, in a way, Providence kind of smiled on us, but it's also kind of sad because there's so many people that appeared on that screen that are no longer with us, uh, starting uh, with Jim Dickinson. Uh, well, really starting with Chris Bell, but I mean, he wasn't with us. Uh, for a long time uh, when we started the, uh, uh, the picture. But uh, I remember when Adam Hill and I finished, and this is a silly digression, but uh, when Adam Hill and I finished uh, the, the mastering and the, and the remixes that we did for the Rhino uh, two-disc reissue of the Chris Bell, I Am the Cosmos, which sounds great, by the way, even if I do say so. Um, and I walked out of the studio on a Friday afternoon, and I got a phone call very early in the morning uh, on Saturday from Luther Dickinson telling me that Jim had passed away. And, you know, he was the first one, and then after that it was, you know, Alex and Andy and Carol, uh, Steve Ray, 
who else? I mean, well, Tommy Hoyne isn't in the film, but he certainly would, you know, it would have been. So um, the point is it couldn't be duplicated. So um, anyway. True. let me ask you, you recently showed the film in Memphis. Can you uh, share uh, what that was like? Well, it was, I mean, it, you see, we kind of, what we loved was kind of Memphis Bohemia. We discovered that there was a scene there, and all those people showed up, and uh, were laughing in places you wouldn't even know, and uh, there was a lot of storytelling afterwards. Um, it was just kind of a wild place, and uh, a really fruitful time, and, um, you know, Olivia and I were there two summers and just dug into that stuff, and that kind of changed the course of the film. I think it could have just been like a a band chronology, but we just wanted that atmosphere, and I think that we didn't realize how much that atmosphere had affected that music, and I think that the the doc started to become more of a pondering of, like, where music comes from and, you know, the various influences, and it was nice because we just kind of started hitting these tangents that seemed unwise at the time and started to work, and I'm really pleased that that worked out, and I had to ask a lot of other people, is this boring you, or do you get this, and I think we finally found that balance. So, We're so uh, proud to be able to show the New York premiere of this film. Uh, pl feel free to take your conversations out uh, onto the street and into the night. Uh, we got five more days of great documentaries. Tomorrow, David Bromberg will be here. Anthony Hagerty will be here for the film Turning. Uh, lots more great music documentaries and other documentaries. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks especially to Drew, Danielle, Olivia, John, and Jody.